Yeah, whatever. Hi. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the latest consoles out of China, video games. That's right, this console is so generic, it's just called video games. And it's not even just mentioned once, it's mentioned quite a few times. So this thing was £25 and obviously looks like a fake Nintendo Switch. But you know what? It is quite possibly one of the best handhelds I've looked at this year. Before we move on to this, this video has been sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. You may have noticed recently, I have been growing out my beard. As you can see, I'm looking rather fine. Nobody likes it. Use this. If I upset her, she'll make me sell the Game Boys. Big thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. For just five bucks, you can get this here Ultimate Shave Starter Set, which includes the executive weighty handle and six high quality blades. Goodbye beard and moustache of almost a month. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> a one ounce tube of Dr. Mario's, <clears throat> sorry, Carver's prep shave butter and post shave Oh my dew. god, that, that, oh, maybe I was meant to wear, wear my face first. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I just sanded my face down. I can't see. So this is the shave butter. Now it's clear so that you can see where you're shaving. And I need that because I'm not shaving a lot. So yeah, this razor looks really, really high quality. I don't really know what the telltale signs of a nice razor is because I haven't had many. But here we go. Whoa. Dollar Shave Club also sent me their three ounce post shave cream, which made me feel reborn, despite applying it horribly wrong. And lastly, a little bit of post shave cream just to finish off my face. Just gonna, I think, was I gonna put that over my whole face? <laughs> oh God. Honestly now, my, my skin feels so goddamn good. That cream that they gave me is insane. I don't think I was meant to put it over my whole face, but I haven't got a clue. So uh, yeah, video games. Obviously, um, as I mentioned, this thing has been made to look like the Nintendo Switch. Um, as humans, we are quite dumb. And if we see this and we see that it's reminiscent of a good thing, we'll think it's good too. I picked this up from AliExpress for 25 quid, as I mentioned. It says on the side that it's eight gigabyte on a uh, seizure inducing sticker. And I'm quite excited really to talk about it because I've played it for about 20 minutes and I'm actually very, very pleasantly surprised. So one thing that they did make quite a fuss about on their website is that it's actually HDMI um, or HDMI capable um, with the output on there. And funnily enough, and I thought this was really brilliant, they've included an HDMI cable, which is mental. So it's got a sort of a mini HDMI uh, to regular and uh, yeah, very surprising that they've included that. I didn't think the um, HDMI output would actually work, but it works flawlessly. Unreal, very impressed. We're not gonna be taking a look at it again besides that B-roll because the only monitor I have, I'm using on this camera. And if I didn't have it, I couldn't see what I was doing. I can't see. Um, we've also got some headphones and uh, one of them has been sealed in a plastic bag, whereas the other one hasn't. So not sure why that is, but yeah, I mean, these things are just not good. Yeah, let's not talk about those. Uh, we've also got a micro USB cable, which is a bit of a shame. I feel like USB-C would have been nice, um, although the cable does feel awful. Um, and then lastly, we have a manual, which is in full Chinese because, yeah. Um, this thing has been made by a company called Cool Baby. No, it hasn't. Cool Baby just seems to buy up all of these handhelds and then just put their name on it and then sell it saying that it's theirs. But you can actually pick this up from many different companies besides Cool Baby. So on the back of the device, we have a, what would have probably been a camera that has been um, closed up for saving money purposes because 25 pounds is quite cheap. We've got a speaker on the back. This thing obviously is outputting in a mono sound, although probably stereo through the headphones. We've got our HDMI headphone, USB, and then a micro SD card slot, as well as the power button and a menu button. We've got two shoulder buttons, which is obviously good because one would be weird. There's a sort of a grip thing going on around the back, which uh, to be honest, I don't hold it like that and it doesn't really make, I mean, it makes a bit of a difference, I guess. There's nothing on the bottom. There's what looks to be a microphone on the side and nothing on that side. Uh, so yeah, that just leaves the front. So we've got a 
Joy-Con style looking thing, but obviously they're not detachable. So we've got a joystick up here on this side and we've got a minus and we've got a plus, just like the Joy-Cons, uh, but these are actually volume buttons. Of course they are. Um, we've got a screen protector. We can go ahead and peel that off. That came off quite nicely. It's got a pretty okay weight to it. I mean, it doesn't feel great. If you sort of put it on your arm and close your eyes so you can't feel the cheap plastic, it feels like a nice thing. And then you pick it up and it, it's got this like soft touch sort of, I don't know how to describe that, but it isn't fantastic. Um, they've banged the chrome looking silver border on around the edge of it just to make it look like it's more premium, but you can't fool me. It's cheap plastic. Let's turn it on. Here we go. A ball. Ooh. Welcome. Did it say welcome? I couldn't even see that. So, I have loaded some games onto here and I discovered something absolutely mental. So let's just get all the crap out of the way. Uh, we've got tools, we've got a calculator, we've got a calendar, we've got settings. Um, in here is where you can um, figure out what TV output you want so you can set it to HDMI. We've got our games, which are the in inbuilt games, and there is some nice inbuilt games to be honest. We've got music, we're never going to use this for music, let's be honest. We've got video, and weirdly, there's some videos on here. Look at this. Why is that there? Photo, ebook, dictionary, stopwatch, browser. Browser is for the files, that's quite useful. And then we're back to tools again. It's got a pretty nice selection of games inbuilt. Mario Kart, Firefighter, Crash and Spyro, Crash of the Titans, Super Mario Advance, Mario Party, Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry again, Tom and Jerry more, Need for Speed, Carbon. So let's have a quick look then at Mario Kart because that's the only one on the list that I immediately care about. If you go into settings um, and go on to screen size, you can change it to original size, which is what I prefer. You can have it on a sort of a full um, screen stretched resolution, but I'm not a massive fan of that to be honest with you. Um, it just doesn't look fantastic. So if you put it onto this one, the quality of the screen will be 1-1. Um, original aspect re resolution and ratio and the pixel um, actual pixel count of this thing is it looks equal to the original console so although the screen is smaller that's because this has a higher density of pixels compared to uh, the, the Game Boy Advance SP that this thing came out on so uh, yeah it does look really really good there isn't a lot of screen tear that I have actually seen yet but uh, you guys can make a judgment call for yourselves viewing angles are pretty good as well I've got this obviously um, on the top camera uh, and I have to keep it straight for you guys but I can see it fine looking at it from here doesn't mean I'm going to be good at this game though because I'm quite bad it's a little bit difficult to see from here to be fair okay the L and R buttons aren't mapped automatically let's see if we can change that let's press start and then hit that menu button. If you press the menu button, it sort of takes you back. I think that's actually what it's doing. There we go. Okay, so you can actually just change it to, uh, to L and I. It was automatically mapped to these X, Y buttons. So let's go back to the game then. Has that made any difference? No, it hasn't. Okay, so you have to click save. So we've got L and then we've got R and then save change. There we go, save changes, yes. Okay, lovely, this is, this is very nice. Continue, ah, okay, sweet. So it didn't come um, pre-mapped out of the box, but it's all good now and uh, it's working fine. And I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys can, uh, can see or not, but there is no screen tear on this thing. And this is 25 pounds, by the way. Like that Pocket Go, the first Pocket Go that came out had quite a lot of screen tear and that thing was like 30, 40 quid or something. I'll whack it on full screen so that you can all see what that looks like, but um, to be honest, as I said, I'm not a big fan of the whole stretched thing. It, I mean, it definitely works, you know, it doesn't look too too bad, but um, I prefer to play it in the original aspect ratio. We finished sixth. That's good. So to go back, um, you can just press this menu button, as I mentioned, and then you can go down to save game, and it's of course got save states, so you can just whack it there in uh, progress two, for example. Um, and then when you go all the way back out of the console, and you go games, you go into your directory list, go down to GBA game, and then you find Mario Kart. Instead of going uh, restart, you can just go load progress, and then progress two, and it takes you exactly back to where you were. So that is really, really good. I am 
pleasantly surprised so far. And remember, £25. There's going to be so many people already typing, the screen quality looks bad. £25. That's not even the price of an AGS 101 screen, so chill. NES isn't something I'm too fussed about because all those knockoff handhelds that I've done reviews on, the NES games come built in. But I guess we'll take a look at Adventure of Lolo because I've never heard of that game. Here we go. The colours, by the way, do look very nice as well. I'm not sure if you can uh, see that that well on the camera, but the, the colours of the screen look fantastic. Wow, this looks like a horrible game. What is this, like a Bomberman sort of vibe? What's going on here? Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Let's get out of here. NES works fine. Here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So these are the games that I put on myself of cartridges I actually own. Le look, it's a, it's a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> it looks like a Nintendo Switch. That is so funny. Bang, there's my thumbnail. To go into uh, the menu and we'll go down to uh, settings and then screen size. Check that back to original size because I just prefer it. Now it does go very small. But if I just bring this up, and hopefully the camera zooms will, uh, focus won't change, look at the quality of the screen. It's pixel perfect. It's absolutely unbelievable. I can't even get over how good it is. I mean, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for you to see. But um, yeah, the other thing to talk about, screen tear, because a lot of people are very, uh, very concerned with these cheap devices that the screen tear is going to be quite bad. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's definitely not seamless. Like, let's be honest, it's not seamless. But it's not bad. The sound is absolutely on point. Like, there is no weird sound glitches of anything. It absolutely works uh, flawlessly. Screen tear is, is probably also going to be game dependent. You know, it, it is going to um, depend on what game you're playing. But generally speaking, I'm very, very impressed by this. Again, Game Boy Color isn't anything absolutely crazy. Um, we are quite fortunate that there's a lot of consoles out there now that can play these very, very well. But for £25, not a lot of people are speaking about this fake Switch looking thing. And it's actually very decent. I am a big fan. Where it gets really interesting is the SNES, which it plays absolutely perfectly. Let me show you. This game was, uh, was it not remade on the, uh, the Switch? So you've sort of got an OG Switch for 25 quid. It works very well. It looks very nice. I mean, as I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the whole stretch resolution thing, but it does look very nice and it plays incredibly well. You can plug this into your TV and play on the big screen as if you were playing an actual Nintendo Switch. The Switch Lite does not switch and they called it a Switch, whereas this switches and it's £25 and it's not made by Nintendo. So, I mean, how can you even complain about it? Super Nintendo works very well, but where it gets ridiculous is the fact that this thing can play PlayStation 1. Wh what? Like, it was not expected. I didn't see that it listed anywhere that it did play PlayStation 1. Now, before you all get your hopes up, it does not play PlayStation 1 well, but it works. It absolutely works. Now, I'm going to be showing Spyro on here because Spyro is quite a generic um, game that everyone thinks of when they think of the PlayStation as well as Crash Bandicoot. But I'll be showing this game just because of how sort of graphically intensive it is as well. So where it is promising is there is a massive community in modding these and putting custom firmware on them. And if enough people get behind this little thing, which apparently is called the RS11, although on the box it's obviously called video games, if enough people get behind this, I reckon developers will make custom firmware for this, which will optimize PlayStation 1. I mean, look, it's not, as I said, it, it's not fantastic, and there is no way I can sit here and say, well, this is gonna be playable, but it isn't bad. It, I mean, it is bad. The fact that it can even do it, and, and the fact that it opened the game just blew my mind. I mean, it's not, it's not super playable. We're probably getting like four frames a second, but, as I said, if enough people get behind this and developers start making custom firmware for this thing, then I don't see why they wouldn't be able to just optimize it and uh, get it to work very well. But that is gonna conclude this video. One last time, big thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. Visit dollarshaveclub.com forward slash 
TRF and pick up your starter shave kit for five bucks. Um, I did obviously want to also compare this thing to the original Nintendo Switch. As you can see, size-wise, it's a little bit smaller. The screen is definitely smaller. Um, it's quite funny to have a, uh, a fake Switch running the original Link's Awakening and then the new Switch, uh, the well, the Switch <laughs> running the uh, uh, proper remade Link's Awakening game. There's definitely a lot of fun to be had. Whatever it isn't and whatever it can't do does not take away from what it is and what it can do. For £25, I'm definitely mind-blown. £25, by the way, is like $32 or something. But um, obviously, this video has been a little bit less serious than some of my other ones. Let me know if you like that or, or not, and we can obviously change that up. But I just wanted to do things a little bit differently in 2020. Um, here it is next to the Switch Lite. Not too dissimilar in, in size. I mean, it's a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit smaller, but yeah, it is very funny. I don't have the uh, red and blue Joy-Cons to chuck on here just to get the uh, really funny comparison, but I'll edit it for the thumbnail or something. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.